Good evening, everyone. My name is Whitney Moran, and I'm the managing editor of Nimbus Publishing based in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. On behalf of all of my colleagues, I'd like to welcome you to tonight's book launch for Anne's Cradle, The Life and Works of Hanako Morioka, Japanese translator of Anne of Green Gables. No matter where you're visiting us from today, I want to acknowledge the land that Nimbus Publishing and its employees occupy. We are located on unceded and unsurrendered Mi'kmaq territory in Jibuktuk, Mi'kmaq. We are settlers and grateful guests here. We acknowledge the privilege of taking up this space and invite you all to consider what it means to be an ally, to live in gratitude and in community. This is National Indigenous Heritage Month, and I encourage you all to learn as much as you can about the Indigenous people of the land where you live. It's my absolute privilege to be here today to celebrate this beautiful book. It has been many years in the making. Anne of Green Gables was first published in 1908. Hanako Morioka began translating the book into Japanese in 1943. The original Japanese edition of Anne's Cradle was published in 2008. And in 2018, I received an email inquiry from Dr. Elizabeth Epperly. She had been approached by Kimihiro Ishikane, ambassador of Japan to Canada on behalf of author Eri Marioka, who was looking for a Canadian publisher for the best-selling biography of her grandmother, Hanako. Many conversations, emails, translations, and edits later, Nimbus is so proud to present this incredible story available for the first time in English. I'm going to say a few thank yous and then introduce our guests of honor for the evening. Thank you firstly to Dr. Elizabeth Epperly for connecting Nimbus with this amazing project. We are ever so grateful. Thank you to the Japanese emb embassy for starting the conversation and for supporting this project. This book is such a wonderful tribute to the ongoing friendship between our two countries. Thank you to the Toyo Iwa School for funding this project. Thank you to Michiko Urata for managing the project on the Japanese side and for being so delightful to work with. Thank you to my colleagues at Nimbus, especially the book's designer, Heather Bryan, proofreader, Emily McKinnon, and publicist, Kate Watson. Thank you, as always, to the Canada Council for the Arts and the Province of Nova Scotia for making our publishing program possible. Thank you, especially to translator Kathy Herano, an absolute professional whose passion for her work can be read on every page of this book. And finally, thank you to Eri Marioka for trusting us with your grandmother's beautiful story. It is such an honor to publish this book. While I'm sure you're all familiar with it by now, here's a little bit about Anne's Cradle. Born into an impoverished family of tea merchants in rural Japan at the end of the 19th century, Hanako Morioka's fortunes change dramatically when she is offered a place at an illustrious girls' school in Tokyo, founded by the Methodist Church of Canada. Nurtured by the Canadian missionaries who teach her, she falls in love with English poetry and literature. This love of the written word develops into a passion for writing and translating children's literature that sustains Hanako through devastating personal tragedies in the tumult of the 20th century. In 1941, after Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, Hanako abruptly resigns from her role of reading children's news over the radio, for which she is known and loved throughout Japan as Radio Auntie. Branded as enemies, the peace-loving missionaries who nurtured Hanako in her youth and with whom she later would have been forced, worked, have been forced to leave the country. But Hanako finds solace in a gift received from a Canadian friend, a copy of Ellen Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. Although it is a book from an enemy nation, the story of Anne Shirley brings back vivid memories of precious friends in distant lands, giving Hanako courage and hope for the future. Amidst the wail of air raid sirens, she begins translating her copy into Japanese in 1943, fully aware that she risks imprisonment and even death if caught. Although she completes the majority of the work by the end of the war, it is only much later that a publisher decides to take a chance on a Canadian author, previously unknown in Japan, unwittingly launching a cross-cultural literary legacy that continues to this day. Anne's Cradle tells the complex and captivating story of a woman who risked her freedom and devoted her life to bringing quality children's literature to her people during a period of tumultuous change in Japan. Through the gift of Hanako Marioka's translations, generations of Japanese readers have fallen in love with the plucky redhead from Prince Edward Island. We can't wait for you all to read this book and to meet the brilliant Hanako Marioka. Now let's meet our honored guests. 
author Ari Marioka, translator Kathy Hirano, and launch moderator Melanie Fishbane. Eri Marioka, granddaughter of Hanako Marioka, graduated from Saijo University in Tokyo in 1990, majoring in literature and arts, and subsequently worked as a writer for a women's magazine. In 2014, her celebrated biography of her grandmother's translation of Anne of Green Gables into Japanese became the basis of a six-month TV drama series on NHK, Japan's public television station, which received high acclaim. In 2019, she published the biography of Tokiko Iwatani. Kathy Hirano graduated from the International Christian University in Tokyo in 1983 with a BA in cultural anthropology and has been translating professionally since 1984. Her translations of YA fiction and fantasy have won several awards, including a 2020 Michael L. Prince Honor Award for the Beast Player by Nahoko Yuriyashi. Her translations of The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up and its sequels by Marie Kondo are international bestsellers. She lives in Shikoku, Japan. And finally, Melanie J. Fishbane holds an MFA from the Vermont College of Fine Arts and an MA from Concordia University and teaches English and children's literature in Toronto. She has essays published in Ellen Montgomery's Rainbow Valleys, The Ontario Years, 1911 to 1942, and Reconsidering Laura Ingalls Wilder, Little House and Beyond. Her best-selling YA novel, Maud, a novel inspired by the life of Ellen Montgomery, was shortlisted for the Vine Awards for the Best in Canadian Jewish Literature. Her essay, Two Anne's Many Anne's, a writer's reflection on reading Anne of Green Gables and the Diary of a Young Girl, is forthcoming in the Journal of Ellen Montgomery Studies. Melanie lives in Toronto with her partner and their fur babies, Merlin Cat and Angel Dog. Now please welcome Melanie J. Fishbane, who will lead us through the rest of the evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited to be here tonight and to celebrate the launch of this beautiful book. I cannot have recommend it enough. It's fantastic. Um, today, I am speaking to you from the Danforth East End of Toronto, which is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. I acknowledge and am grateful um, th that I live here in Toronto, which is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, who have been guardians of this land, past, present, and future. Today, as the Ella Montgomery Institute on Prince Edward Island is co-hosting with the event, I acknowledge that the land where the Institute originates is Epicwick, the Mi'kmaq name for what is known as Prince Edward Island and the ancestral traditional and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people of this region. Briefly, I have some thanks as well. I need to thank Batsley Epperly and Yuka Kajihara Nolan for their guidance. Um, Yuka is an expert in the work of Hanako Muraoka and she was really helpful in help, helping me prepare for tonight. So thank you, Yuka. And to Philip Smith, Kate Scarth and Alisa Gillespie for the um, or Gillespie uh, from the Ella Montgomery Institute for their help in co-hosting and promoting the event. And a special note of gratitude to Kate Watson and Whitney Moran from Nimbus, who have been so incredible and lovely to work with. It's been fantastic, a wonderful experience. Um, I'm so excited to be chatting with Ari Murioka and Muraoka and Kathy Hirano. Um, there will be a, sh a short reading though before I ask them all my questions. I have so many questions, it's gonna be great. But then we'll also um, open it up to you. So first what's gonna happen is that there will be a short reading um, in both Japanese and English. Um, and then I'll be asking some questions and then after that we'll open it up and there will be some questions that you can put in, I believe in the chat, and then uh, Kate Watson, who's working behind the scenes, is gonna float some of the questions to the surface where I will um, moderate that. Um, their section that Ari and Kathy will be reading from is about the publication of the Japanese translation of Anna Green Gables and how readers responded. Um, Ari's gonna read a short section in Japanese um, and then Kathy's going to read a longer portion in English. And so now I introduce you to our honored guests.
Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, a friend of mine sent me your beautiful book, Mode. Oh, I, it's a great honor to meet you. It's so wonderful to meet you as well. It's so exciting for all of us to be here together. Welcome and welcome, Kathy. Nice to see you. Thank you. you. So, Thank you. It's, it's it's really exciting to meet you. Yes. And to be here. Thank <laughs> it's so you. So great. It is beautiful day in Tokyo this morning. Mm -hmm. How are you? Cassie? Oh, yeah, lovely. Absolutely lovely, but it's going to be too hot. I know. It's really nice now. It's only mm -hmm. seven in the morning. Perfect. So, did you want to get started in your on your reading? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Go for it. Oh, I will read a little in Japanese. This is Japanese paperback. そんな社会背景の中、5月10日、初めての赤毛の案は出版された。案は、自由と夢と平和を求める日本の読者の前に、希望の象徴のように現れた。赤い文字で、赤毛の案と書かれている表紙のカバーには、どうひいき目に見ても、案とは似つかわない、金髪の、しかもとても深刻な顔をしている少女が描かれている。これは、花子が深く関わっていた雑誌、少女の友の昭和15年2月号、名作画集の特集で紹介されたイギリスの画家、ラルフ・ピーコックのエセルと題された人物画だった。花子は少女の、少女たちのために希望をかけて取り組み、時代を共に歩んだこの雑誌から、ちょっとエセルを連れ出し、赤毛のあるの表紙に飾った。おそらく、少女の友の愛読者世代がこの物語を手にすることだろう。苦難の時代を共にくぐり抜けたかつての少女たちへ愛を込めて。I'll read in English. <laughs> it's, I know it's hard because, like, without the. Everyone's applauding. You just can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, ahead, I will read in English a little bit longer section. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Please. It was within this social context that the Japanese version of Anne of Green Gables debuted on May 10th. The Japanese people yearned for freedom, ideals, and peace. And Anne appeared as a symbol of hope. The cover, which bore in red letters the title Akage no Anne, Red-Headed Anne, featured a girl with strawberry blonde hair and a serious expression. Not even the most prejudiced eye could have claimed that this girl resembled the book's heroine. The illustration was, in fact, the painting Ethel by British artist Ralph Peacock, which had been introduced in a feature on famous paintings in the February 1940 edition of Girl's Friend. Hanako, who had been closely involved with the magazine since around 1935, saw this publication as a beacon of hope that had accompanied Japanese girls through the changing times. Knowing that many fans of the magazine would read the book she had translated, Hanako had quietly taken that picture and placed it on the cover. She did so as an expression of love for all the girls and women who had lived through great hardship. Compared to the translations Hanako had published before the war, such as The Prince and the Pauper, Pollyanna Grows Up, and The Exile, Portrait of an American Mother. The binding was of very poor quality, but she couldn't complain. Being able to publish at all was worthwhile and brought her immense joy. The price was 250 yen per copy. At a time when a bowl of noodles with broth cost only 13 yen, the book's price was steep indeed. Hanako took a copy just off the presses before the publication date. Inside the cover, she wrote, For my beloved Midori from Mother, and gave the book to her daughter. Miss Shaw had died in Canada in 1940, while the author, Lucy Maud Montgomery, had passed away in 1942. 
But Hanako had carried on the spirit of these two women, and the Japanese version, Akage no An, was the result. In the, after in the afterword of the first edition, Hanako wrote, There is something within the story of Anne, a young girl wrapped in a world of daydreams, that breathes with the pure innocence of girlhood. An innocence which is never lost, but lives on in our longing for it. Even in the age of the airplane, mm -hmm. even though television has become a familiar part of daily life. Although the country of Canada extends north from the United States of America, the Canadian people have a cheerfulness and simplicity that sets them apart from the Americans or the British. I learned English from Canadian missionaries at Toyo Ewa Girls School, which was founded through the collaboration of Canadian missionaries and the Japanese. From that time to the present, the Westerners I have met have mainly been Canadians. My desire to introduce this work by a Canadian author stems from my gratitude for the warm friendship extended to me by many Canadians. Now, when the publishing industry of Japan suffers from a dearth of wholesome family literature, it is with great joy that I dedicate my translation of Anne of Green Gables, the eternal heroine of the younger generations, to the memory of my youthful days at my alma mater on top of the hill in Azabu, and to the younger sisters of my heart who continue to study there. Anne of Green Gables captured the hearts of young women all over Japan, quickly becoming a bestseller and far exceeding the expectations of both Hanako and the publisher. Although the Japanese were materially poor, through Anne's words, readers knew the joy of using their imagination and their admiration for the heroine extended to Anne's homeland, Prince Edward Island. Readers sent Hanako letters, some of which, like the following, were influenced by Anne's style of talking, making Hanako smile. Mrs. Muraoka, who gave me this marvelous book, won't you be my bosom friend? Yay! <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> My bosom friend. It's so great. Oh. I love that section. Thank you so much for reading it. That was beautiful. So well done. So I have lots of questions and we'll get to a few. Um, mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is I have individual questions and then some questions for you both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe what's going to happen is, Kathy, you're going to translate for Ari. Is that, yes. is that correct? Okay. Yes. So this first question is for Ari. Okay, mm -hmm. Ari. Can you tell us how the concept for this book started and developed? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 非常によく知られた記事人の一人であり、またあの翻訳家としてはあの赤毛のあの最初の翻訳家としてよく知られていたいましたけれども、彼女があのそういうふうになり得たのはそこに多くのカナダ人の先生たち、友人たちの影響という
英訳出版が実現しました。本当に実現したというのが夢のようなんですけれどもこれはあのひとえにその「赤毛のアン」というモンゴメリが書いた物語の力だと。それがすごく大きな力を持っていたからだというふうに私は思っています。So I actually find it really hard to believe that this is really happening, but I think the fact that this dream has come true shows just how powerful the story of Anne of Green Gables is. この本の出版に関わったすべての人たちにとても心から感謝しています。And I'm extremely grateful to everyone who was involved in making this possible.、Mm-hmm. That's lovely. <laughs> okay. So lovely. You see, you can agree. There she is. Yeah, it's so lovely. It's such a community effort. Everyone kind of coming together to support、mm-hmm. the creation of this book. It's, and it's such a reflection of the Montgomery community and how it comes to. Together. So thank you for that, Ari. I'm for Kathy. Okay. okay. Can I just <laughs> Actually, translate your comment? or?、Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, please. So, 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 Montgomery,、yeah. no community, no, I know. So, no, kids, that kids, that you can say, and me, no, no, she got a day, call you, put a good day, to go to a home to me, and oh, we see this, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, it's a similar question, and、um, it's how did you get involved in this project?、Uh, about? Actually, yeah, it, it was through Eddie.、Uh, Eddie、mm-hmm. was specifically looking for a translator who was Canadian and a woman. And、mm-hmm. she later told me that she wanted someone who could relate to her grandmother's、mm-hmm. experience as a translator,、mm-hmm. but also someone who could look at the work through Canadian eyes. Mm-hmm. And particularly to identify areas that would be hard for Canadians to understand and to kind of、uh, mm-hmm. help them、uh, understand. So I did not know Eddie personally, but I was very lucky that one of the people she asked knew someone who knew me and、mm-hmm. they introduced us.、Mm-hmm. That's、yeah. great. So it was meant to be. Oh, it feels like that to me. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's so、I、wonderful. I love that so much. Um, and we're going to, I want to talk、uh, more with you about the whole translating a translator thing.、Um, Mary, I'd like to ask you actually.、Um, my next question is、um, this translation,、um, as you write, is a way to introduce new readers not only to your grandmother's work, but also to Japanese and women's history. そうですね、あの日本とあの女性の歴史に関してのものでもありますし、自分の,あの,あのおばあさんまのことも書かれてるんですけど、みんなどういう、何をこ,こ,からこの本から得てほしいかっていうことですね。ある日本の読者からあのこの本を読んだ後にあのに自分自身もの祖父母の歴史に興味がある人の話をあの初めてゆっくり聞いたっていう感想をいただきました。So, uh, one of the Japanese people who read this book told me that、um, thanks to this book, it, it really made her want to listen to the stories of her own grandparents' history.、Mm-hmm. And so, for the first time, she actually sat down and really listened to what they had to say. こう頑張って乗り越えて生き,て生き抜いてきたその先祖というのが必ずいる
ていてそれぞれの家庭にはそれぞれものすごくドラマティックな物語っていうのが必ずあるはずなんです。So,、um, as you know, Japan was defeated in the war, and during that time, I don't think there was anyone in Japan who、uh, was actually happy. It was a really、mm. difficult time, and I'm sure that every Japanese family has ancestors, even people who are living now, who suffered greatly during and after the war. Yet they didn't give up, they still strove to survive and carry on. And I think every one of these families must have. Dramatic stories to share of all the ups and downs in their lives. この本をきっかけにそういう世代を超えた対話が生まれるっていうことは素晴らしいなと思いますしまたそ,のそういうことでそういう昔を想像することでその今の平和の美しさというか平凡な日常の美しさというものも非常にこう改めて理解することができると思うんです。So,、uh, to me, I thought that it's really wonderful that this book can start a dialogue across the generations.、Mm. And then, through this dialogue, we can realize how important and actually how exquisitely beautiful peace is and how very precious、mm. ordinary everyday life is.、Mm. Uh, so, in this book, the book is not a book that is not a book that is not a book that is not a book. 底力みたいな物語の底力みたいなものが再認識されればいいなっていうふうに思います。I also think it might help people to realize why、uh, Anne of Green Gables is so popular in Japan, why it's so well loved, and maybe that also will give people、uh, an understanding of the, the great power of stories and particularly of this story. I, I really find it so interesting the idea that this book can have generations talk to one another and then also、mm -hmm. have the generations, but then you have international conversations happening as well. I think it's that kind of leads into、um, my question. Let's see. Uh, my question for Kathy, I think,、mm. would be the next one. So, one of the things that if we're looking at historical connection is the amount of historical documents、mm. that、um, are in this book. Yeah. So, what I really find so interesting is that we have this combination of telling、mm -hmm. of the history and people's family, and then we have journal entries. Mm. And diaries. And then there's also conversations、uh, mm -hmm. that may or may not have happened. I guess that's a question I wanted to also <laughs> find out about.、Um, but so I'm curious to know from a translator's point of view、um, mm. how did you approach this so you could get the nuances of the language、right. and, and how does that convey itself? When you translate it from Japanese to English. And I guess you're also looking at historical documents, so the tones and things would be different, right? Yeah, th that was actually a real challenge because、uh, Japanese as a language has really changed over the last、mm -hmm. 70 years, right? Even、mm -hmm. the last 100、right. years. It's changed so drastically that、um, it's actually hard for、uh, contemporary younger Japanese generations to read some of the older.、Uh, Poetry or literature in the original.、Mm. And I, I was thinking, you know, it's a little bit like how we actually study Shakespeare in school.、Yeah. It's incredibly beautiful English language, but you don't understand it until you've studied it a little bit. And then you can learn to really enjoy it.、Mm -hmm. So for me, that was a real challenge. And、um, I had to work、uh, very closely with Japanese collaborators, particularly people like my husband. And、okay. it meant asking them a lot of detailed questions like, what does this mean? And how does this make you feel? And, you know, just trying to capture the tone、right. uh, of the Japanese, but also trying to make sure that I understood it because it, it was quite different. And so the journal entries, the letters are a very different voice from Eddie's writing, which is、mm -hmm. modern Japanese. And、mm -hmm. it's, she's storytelling. So, right. I, I wanted to bring about some difference in that, but I wasn't sure 
uh, how much of a difference there is in English. So I read um, the Toyo Ewa uh, school actually has a lot of archival information. Oh, cool. They gave me so many letters and uh, records written by the missionaries of that time. So I was able to get a feel for the language that way. And also, for example, of course, I, I reread Anne of Green Gables and some other books from that period. And to my relief, English has not changed as much as Japanese. <laughs> so I, I didn't have to worry too much, but I, I did try and sort of, there's a more slight, slightly formal style mm. or voice of the Japanese at that time a little bit. I tried to reproduce that somewhat. And I think the hardest for me was the poetry. Mm, yeah. uh, Hanako's contemporaries, some of her very good friends were very well-known writers and poets. And I, I felt very inadequate and humbled. Like, I think you really have to be a poet to translate poetry uh, beautifully. And I'm, I'm just very sorry I, I'm not a poet. Well, I, I hope some of the beauty comes through. It definitely does from my perspective. But yeah, that's true because there is the poetry as well. So it's quite an endeavor and a successful one. Oh, I'm having read the original Japanese, but I'm going to say yes, because that's pretty amazing to me. So congratulations, that's wild. Um, okay, I'm gonna do a question for both of you okay. now. Um, I'd love, to, I'm sure everyone is really interested in knowing how do the two of you work together? What kind of, what were so, I mean, Kathy, you mentioned already that you did some additional research for things and um, what were some of the questions you had when you were translating and working together on this translation? For me? Um, so why or don't we start, do with, start with, with Eddie? Let's start with Ari and then we'll, we'll mm -hmm. go with あの、どういうふうに協力したかっていうことですね。はい。あの、あるいはmany of her questions were about uh, interpretations of letters and other writings about the subtle nuances of, of expression and Japanese is a very vague language um, it's you you don't say things directly whereas English is very exact uh, you have to be very direct you have to be very clear and she kept asking me so what did you really mean and I had to really think about that because sometimes I was not really thinking that uh, exactly. So then I had to clarify what I meant. So she also asked me things, for example, how to render proper names in English, about chronological order and flow. And uh, because I had written this book for Japanese readers, I hadn't considered, uh, you know, how it would be for English readers. So she would ask me about um, additional information that might be needed for English readers to understand it. あの、調べる情報というものもいっぱい、方法もいっぱいあるんですけれども、その昔の日本のものっていうのをこう英語に表現するっていうのは非常に難しかったと思うんですね。So now in Japan, I mean, we're very materially well off. There's lots of information. It
uh, concerning things that were written this long ago, it's actually quite hard. And I think that must have been very difficult for her. ないものをこう今の読者のためにこう説明する、伝える、伝えるっていうことの苦労において、私はそのキャシーさんの仕事ぶりを見ながら、もしかしたらその祖母もこういうふうに大変だったのではないか。あの、初版が出た頃の日本っていうのはもう焼け野原からようやく立ち上がってきたっていう状況の中で、それをその日本にない文化っていうものをどうやってその読者に伝えるかっていう。何どうやって置き換えて伝えるかっていうことで非常に苦労したと思うんですよね。だから今回のキャシーさんの仕事ぶりを見ながら私はよりその祖母の仕事、思い、願いみたいなものも含めてより身近に感じることができました。Oh, Have never experienced or don't know anything about.、Mm. And so, as I was watching what Kathy was doing, I was realizing what a difficult job it is to convey、uh, this story to people who have never seen Japan, never experienced it. And that made me think about my grandmother. She was、mm. translating this work、uh, when Japan had been was in the middle of the war, but I mean, it was devastated, it had been bombed. Uh, she was in the middle of devastation with nothing around her to draw on. And、uh, she arose to convey to the Japanese people a culture about which they had no、uh, experience, no understanding. And I felt that, you know, through this process of having the book translated, it brought me closer to my grandmother again. It helped me to imagine what that process might have been like for her.、Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. How about you, Kathy? What kinds of,、uh, or did, did, did Ari? <laughs> yeah, what was it like for me? <laughs> what was it like for you? I, and if I, you can,、yeah. talk on that question that about like, what is it like for a translator to translate a translator? Like, I'm、mm -hmm. so fascinated by the、uh, whole meta ness of this. It's amazing.、Okay. So there's、yeah. two questions there then.、Okay. Yeah. One is But、something. I think you can play around. I'll combine them. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I just want to say,、uh, Eddie was, is, she's just wonderful to work with because she really understands why I need to ask certain questions. I、mm -hmm. think it must be really frustrating as a writer to come at, to have someone say to you, So, what did you mean by this? You know, of、I、course, know. you're supposed to understand, <laughs> right? But it's like, No, 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 what did you mean? Because I have to get it across. And、right. she, she was so understanding and she was so willing to consider solutions. For words and concepts that just don't have any English equivalent. She had a real understanding of that. So, of course, a, you know, a lot of my questions were about context and meaning, but、mm. a lot of them were then to consult with her about okay, every Japanese knows this, but no English reader knows it. So,、mm. is it okay for me to add a sentence here or even, you know, more than one sentence? I mean, you know, that's kind of violating the original. Book, right?、Mm -hmm. But for an English reader to actually understand it, I, I felt in some places something needed to be added because I really wanted them to understand it. I mean, there's、uh, in, you know, an incredible opportunity here to see、uh, that period of history through the eyes of this woman who、uh, happens to be Japanese living in Japan. But we've all Uh, we come from that history, right? So, to、mm -hmm. get this, this angle, I felt sometimes we needed to add a little bit of information. And I was really assisted in this process also by a whole team of Canadian friends、mm -hmm. and family who read the book for me in the draft form.、Mm -hmm. And they would say to me, Why? You know, this doesn't make any sense. You know, why are they always selling their children or giving their children away or things like、mm -hmm. this? And I realized it made sense to me because I understood the historical context.、Mm -hmm. uh, it sounded like they didn't love their children, but of course they did. So there needed to be a little bit more background information or the war, the conditions during the war, some of、uh, the things that every Japanese person knows about the war. In Canada, we have no idea. So, yeah, there were many things like that. And then you had another question. Yeah,、oh. I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it.、I'm、okay.、Sorry. This is like my geek question, which is 
what is it like as a translator to translate a book about a translator? Like it feels very like a meta, you know, like you're doing yeah, this thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering yes. if that ever dawned on you and being oh. part of this tradition. And then as Air you too, being a, you know, being a translator and a writer yourself, like you're part of this grand tradition. Like, what is that like? Yeah. Uh, of course, I thought about it the whole way through that book. It was one of the reasons I really wanted to translate it. When I, I get a book, I always read it first to make sure that I mm. uh, have enough empathy and affinity for it that I can translate it. And I just knew, you know, even from the first few pages, it was like, yeah, I really want to translate this book. And um, I think uh, with Hanako, as a translator, uh, watching her story, it was just so inspiring. She, she was working under conditions that, uh, you know, don't exist nowadays. I mean, she was working in extreme conditions. Um, she was working to support her family. She was she was working all the time to promote children's literature. But as a, a translator, I think I really related to the fact that um, some conditions haven't changed. We mm. still, as translators in of children's and young adult literature in particular, there's very little mm. understanding of how important it is and how needed it is. Mm -hmm. um, you can't make a living at it. So you have to do all these other jobs along with it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't actually just focus on translating uh, children's and young adult literature. So that there was a huge affinity. And I think every translator, now we have a network, uh, online networks where we can kind of support one another. Mm -hmm. um, I think she had networks among her writer friends uh, that also supported her. But one thing that I don't face is I didn't have to risk my life. Yeah. to translate and the fact that she did and not only did she risk her life to translate and she did it for love for love of the canadians who were her friends her mentors her teachers for love of the japanese young people because she wanted them to have hope in the midst of this horrible mm -hmm. war um but the result the result of that it it uh touched the hearts of so many people in japan and it did give them hope so for me as a translator, it's like, okay, there is meaning in what I'm doing. You know, uh, it may not solve all the problems of the world, but literature in translation has the potential to help us recognize our common humanity. If we mm -hmm. translate, it helps people to cross cultural bridges in, you know, and I, I don't think it should just be into English. I think we should be translating from and translating into many different languages so that we can get a better picture of who we are uh, as one humanity, not as, you know, separate. Sorry, I went on too long probably. No, that was beautiful. I didn't want to stop you because that was gorgeous. <laughs> I'm so inspired by what you said. I'm just, yes, yes. No, that was okay. helpful. One, uh, we're going to do one more. I want to do one more very important question before mm -hmm. we uh, move, open it up to everyone. And my very important question is, what is your favorite Ella Montgomery book? Ari, what's your favorite Ella Montgomery book? Yes. Yep. Um,私はアンシリーズもレミリーシリーズも大好き。同じぐらい好きなんですけれども、何がベストかって言われたらやっぱりあのグリーンゲーブス。Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I understood that one. So you did. Yeah, you got it. She, she really, she loves all of the, like the Anne series, the Emily series. She loves them all the same. But Anne of Green Gables is her favorite of all of them. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For her family, of course, uh, Anne of Green Gables is a treasure. 
Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> oh, I heard it. Oh. <laughs> that's a beautiful you're, you're, moment. You're my furry dog family friend. To be yeah. part of the conversation. Sorry about that. And what about you, Kathy? What's your favorite Ella Montgomery? Yeah, it's Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, it, it was... Why not? It's always going to be my, my favorite because I finally found someone who was like me, you know, never did anything right. And, you know, had, I, I even had orange hair when I was a certain age. So, yes. I think all of us Anne fans have done that. There's a reason my hair is dyed a little bit red, <laughs> right? Oh, no, totally got it. Thank you, thank you. I had so many more questions, but your answers were so fantastic and they sort of crossed over. So thank you so much for answering my wonderful questions. And now we're gonna open it up to our audience who we don't, we're waving to you. And uh, what, what are some of the questions? So the first one, <laughs> Is, yes. is for Ari, and have you been to PEI? Yes, three three times. Three times. Yes. Maybe I'll go next year. Two. Oh. <laughs> May we all be there next year? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Kathy. Ah. So this yeah, is this is a sorry, Kathy. I'll. I'll Part of my job. I'll do this. Uh, Yuka has asked, have you read Anna Green Gables in Japanese? No, I should have, shouldn't I? I did not. Next yeah. read. <laughs> <laughs> so from Brandon Wallace, um, he asks, can you elaborate on why you think Anna Green Gables has resonated with the Japanese people? Um, so no その理由はやっぱり一つではないと思うんですけれども、あの、し、まず私のアンスクレードルを読んで感じてください。She <笑> said, you know, there's no one reason. So what I'm hoping is that you'll read Anne's Cradle, and that you will actually, through that experience, uh, understand why. Yeah, she's right. Uh, it, it was the same for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't, can't, there's too, too many reasons. Okay. Um, this is from E. E. Roll. I've been so excited for this book ever since I first heard it was coming out in English. Fun! But made myself wait to read it until this event. Oh, this is from Liz. So oh, this was awesome. just a, a lovely comment. <laughs> That's very kind. <laughs> <笑>あの、あ、どうなの。あ、私の祖母は16冊アンシリーズ、エミリーシリーズと16冊訳してるんですけど、その他の作品は現代の新しい翻訳者の方が訳していらっしゃいます。全て訳されてるかどうかちょ
what had been happening and then to get the the language that makes sense in English for that time period. Um, and we were really lucky because uh, we had Patricia Sippel from Toyo Eiwa University, who is a historian uh, specializing in that period, and she read the draft for us. So that helped immensely. Yeah, no, there was just so much about it that was new to me and it was a, a learning experience. Yeah. Thank you. So it's good to have an historian on your side. Oh, that was so helpful. Uh, uh, she said, yeah, the first Japanese edition. Can you show the, the question again? What was the yes. question? Uh, okay. 初版だとかその現象を全て東洋令和に uh, yes. She donated all of her grandmother's um, effects, you know, everything related to yeah. Anne of Green Gables, of course, and all the other things to Toyo Ewa. So mm -hmm. they're all in the archives there, and she doesn't have them with her to show. Sure. <laughs> so this is from Brenton. I lived in Japan 20 years ago. Everyone was interested in Prince Edward Island and Akashino Anne. A lot of Anne fans were women my age. In what mm -hmm. ways are young girls and boys reading Anne today? ま、言ってるかもしれない。だけど読む人、読む子は読んでいる。そして読む力のある子は本当に小学校や中学校の時からこうシリーズで読む人たちがいるし、またそれその子たちが大人になってからこれを読み返すということもまだ続いています。ただ赤
うん青グリーンゲーブルさん内容に似た話はあるかどうかちょっと分かりませんけれどもただ今あ人気のある作家の方でモンゴメリあるいは赤毛のンに影響を受けて彼女たちが読んでたあ読んでた世代がに日本で人気のある作家になってますよね。だからモンゴメリ赤毛のンのチルドレン。的なその作家の人人気作家の人たちはたくさんいます children in Japan. Uh, has made them into good authors. Yes. That's lovely.、Um, Ari, what, can you name an author who's been、uh, influenced by Elle Montgomery in Japan that you can think of off the top、mm-hmm. of your head? Tarika, so no Montgomery no Akio Ukete, Ima Ninki no Saka ni Nateru Hito, I know, Namae demo, Yamaska, Shokai de Kimaska. なしきかほさんっていう。かほなしき。うん。はい。その人のスタイルとか書き方とかあの書く内容とかは何かその影響を感じるところはありますかあいや,やなんて言うんでしょう,こう、ディティールにこだわるというか。非常に細かくそのいろんなものとか自然だとかそういった細かく書き込むところとか非常に影響を受けているっていう気がしますし何しろその彼女の繊細な感性というかあるいはその子供に対するなんていうか子供を個人として扱う、うん、あのそういう目線というものは非常にモンゴメリーにの影響だと思います。So, I see Montgomery's influence in the detail. She,、mm. um, Nashiki, Kaho Nashiki,、uh, writes very detailed descriptions of nature, of things in daily、mm. life. And she has a great sensitivity.、Mm. And also, she has this、um, respect for children. She sees them as individual people. I think、mm. those things are、uh, mm. Montgomery's influence. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we have time for one more question. If there are any in the queue that people want to ask that has not been asked, this is your time to ask all of the questions. Oh, I think we've seen that one from Brandon before. Oh, lots of notes of gratitude. Many、mm-hmm. thanks. It's been lovely to watch. Thank you, Heidi.、Mm-hmm. Thank you, Heidi, for coming. Thank you all for coming.、Mm-hmm. We really appreciate you coming this evening.、Um, all right.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know other questions. Okay. So, I, oh, thank you. So, if you do want a copy of this fantastic book, It is available in Canada from all from your local indie. So definitely check that out there or Indigo, Amazon, or you can buy it off、uh, nimbus.ca. And I believe, yes, it's going to be available in the US mid July from bookstores and amazon.com. So you can check it out、mm-hmm. there. And then in August, you can look for the Amazon in your region、mm-hmm. where you will be able to purchase said book. So Keep an eye out and I hope you will enjoy it. I want to thank you both for such a fascinating conversation. I wish we had more time because I would just talk to you about all my questions all night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, for thank you. Thank you to everyone. Yes, and, and thank、really、you, Melanie,、lovely. for helping me. I really appreciate your approach. Yes, Melanie. Oh, yeah, no, really, it's been such、mm-hmm. an honor to be here. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you、everyone. so much. Thank you, everybody.、Mm-hmm.